Hedgerows are rows of shrubs, trees, and grasses that surround fields. Benefits of hedgerows include weed suppression, habitat and food for wildlife and beneficial insects, a reduction in wind damage to crops and reduced soil and wind erosion. The purpose of this program is to provide information on how to establish hedgerows on rotational field crop farms in the Sacramento Valley. To minimize long-term maintenance costs, it is essential to invest sufficient time in the planning process. This project should be approached in two parts, first planning and then establishing. The first part involves site selection, site analysis, design, plant selection, and plant ordering. Non-cropped areas adjacent to fields, such as along roads, waterways, or fences, can serve as potential sites. Desirable properties of a site include good drainage, availability of water for irrigation, access for equipment movement, and consideration of farming practices in adjacent crops. Choose a site that does not regularly flood or hold standing water. The stress of standing water can result in disease problems that lead to plant death. Many woody drought tolerant plants are particularly prone to problems associated with excess water. If flooding is unavoidable, choose plants that are adapted to flooded conditions. Irrigation is essential for plant survival during the first two years of hedgerow establishment. This may determine what type of irrigation to use. Be sure to allow for unrestricted equipment movement along and or through the hedgerow. When shrubs or trees are incorporated into your hedgerow, remember that the shrubs can grow 10 to 15 feet wide. Minimize hazards to the hedgerow from farming practices such as disking or herbicide drift by notifying others of the existence of the hedgerow and its borders. After making your site selection, thoroughly analyze it for features critical to hedgerow establishment. Site analysis is a critical stage in which you document the soil type and any existing features that can be incorporated into the design. Within a given site, you may have varying soil types. This will determine the suitability of plants to that area. For example, drought-tolerant plants, such as ceanothus, need well-drained soils. Document any existing features that need to be considered when designing your hedgerow. Examples include overhead wires, low spots, high spots, roadways, trees, or any other important feature. The mature height of a plant should be considered when planting below overhead barriers, such as wires. Once a site has been selected and analyzed, a site can be drawn. A long rectangular design lends itself best to the use of standard farming equipment for maintenance. Our experience has been that designs other than long rectangles have been difficult to maintain with conventional farming equipment. A single row of forbs, shrubs, and or trees planted down the side or center of the site with perennial grasses planted along the edges facilitates irrigation, mowing, and weed control. As a rule, allow 10 feet between large shrubs and trees and 5 feet between smaller shrubs and forbs. Sketch out the site on paper. Start by showing the orientation, scale of the drawing, dimensions of the site, and size of the plants at maturity. Plant selection is based on site analysis. Plants must be selected that are appropriate to environmental conditions of the site. We recommend using drought-tolerant plants that are well adapted to Sacramento Valley conditions of winter rain and summer drought. Planting a mix of plant species is better than planting a monoculture in hedgerows because mixed plantings create architectural and seasonal diversity for high-quality wildlife habitat. This applies to grasses as well as forbs and woody plants. The following are examples of plants that grow well on field crop farms in the Sacramento Valley. Those that are adapted to well-drained soils are toyon, coffee berry, California lilac, Ray Hartman, western red bud, and California buckwheat. Plants that are adapted to moderately drained soils include elderberry, 
Cyanothus, Yankee Point, California Fuchsia, and Coyote Brush. Plants that are adapted to heavy soils include all willow species, yarrow, salmon beauty, narrow leaf milkweed, button willow, deer grass, and mule fat. Perennial grasses include a mix of species, such as purple needle grass, meadow barley, and onion grass. Place an order for your plants with a nursery six to nine months in advance of the desired planting date. To ensure good quality plants, the nursery needs sufficient lead time to propagate and grow all the plants you need. We also encourage you to experiment with other plants in your hedgerow that would be adapted to your site because the plant list is far from complete. Once a site has been selected, analyzed, designed, and plants ordered, you are ready to begin preparing and planting the site. Preparation includes weed control, preparing seed beds, and flagging locations of final plant placement. It is best to keep a site weed-free at least one year before hedgerow planting to reduce the weed seed bank. Spraying, disking, and or burning can be used to keep the area clean. List beds if site is to be furrow irrigated or if drainage is a problem. A good seed bed is important for perennial grass seed germination. Flagging can be used to mark plant locations. Color coding a species will facilitate the planting process. After the site is prepared, planting can begin. Planting is best done in early fall for both container stock and grass seed. This allows the plants to get well established prior to hot, dry summers. Plant shrubs and trees at locations marked by flags. Dig a hole the depth of at least twice the width of the original root ball. When you place the root ball into the hole, be sure the top of the root crown is at ground level, or better yet, slightly higher to prevent water from collecting around the root crown of the plant. Use the native unamended soil to backfill the planting hole. Use your hands to pack the soil in the hole. Water the new plantings well to minimize transplant shock and to remove any air pockets from around the root ball. For establishing perennial grass, it is best to wait to seed until after the rains germinate winter weeds. Harrow for weed control. Drill or broadcast grass seed at a rate of 30 pounds per acre. After broadcasting, incorporate the seed with a harrow to an eighth of an inch. If harrowing is not possible, use a light covering of straw. Typically, irrigation is not required as normal winter rains will germinate the seed. Weed control begins as soon as planting is completed to prevent weed competition. For the perennial grass stands, as soon as the grasses are seeded, begin monitoring for weeds. Annual weeds germinate sooner than perennial grass. Typically, perennial grasses take two to three weeks to emerge, while winter weeds normally take only seven to ten days. Those germinated weeds can be sprayed with glyphosate before the perennial grasses have emerged. This will not harm the perennial grasses, and there is no soil residual activity for glyphosate. The following spring, continue monitoring and selectively spray for broadleaf weeds. A backpack sprayer is most effective for use in this setting. Control annual grass weeds by mowing before they set seed. Mow as needed through the growing season, being careful not to cut below a two inch height. Broadleaf control should continue through the summer and fall by hoeing, weed wicking, and or herbicide spraying. In the second year, pre-emergence herbicides such as Ronstar G can be used in perennial grass stands without harming the shrubs. For weed control in the shrub row, use mulches, a pre-emergence herbicide such as Ronstar that won't move in the soil, spot applications of 2,4-D, weed wicking with glyphosate, hoeing, and or flaming. Irrigation of forbs, shrubs, and trees should begin when the weather turns dry. Drip irrigation with adjustable emitters is an efficient and effective method of irrigating using an existing water source or a truck. When using drip irrigation, 
Be sure to let the tubing sit in the sun several days before attaching emitters to allow for changes in length. For the first year of growth, emitters are placed at the edge of the root ball. Constantly check your drip line to be sure that emitters are properly located. We have found a need to check emitter locations each time we have turned on the water supply. As the plants grow, the number of emitters required and their location may change. Make sure plants are getting an adequate supply of water, but not too much. In general, hedgerows need at least two years of irrigation depending on soil type. Other methods include furrow irrigation, but watch again for over or under watering. One last consideration is protection from mammals. Protection for first year plants should be given where damage from mammals is anticipated, such as near weedy ditch banks or riparian areas. Staked protectors for shrubs and trees to guard against grazing or girdling are commonly used. Birds may also be a problem in crops adjacent to hedgerows. It may help to have a buffer zone, such as a road between the crop and the hedgerow. The estimated cost to establish this type of hedgerow with a single row of shrubs and trees and a strip of perennial grasses is approximately $3,200 per quarter mile. This figure includes materials and labor for the first two years. After the first year, monitor your hedgerow to determine if the shrubs or trees need to be replanted or if there are weak areas of the grass stand which should be filled in with plugs. Continue controlling weeds. It is crucial to the establishment of the hedgerow. More information on establishing hedgerows, including nurseries, seed suppliers, vendors, and contractors can be obtained from the following sources.